of video gaming has never really suffered from any shortage of cool names for innovative technologies that are just around the corner. One such term that has only been gaining in popularity recently is cloud gaming. But what is cloud gaming? This is actually a harder term to explain than most, just because it can mean a lot of different things. To some, the simple act of storing files on a cloud server that you can access from multiple devices is already a form of cloud gaming. But this isn't what we're here to talk about today. The cloud gaming that we want to talk about is also sometimes referred to as game streaming. Although this too can sound a bit confusing since it has nothing to do with what game streamers have been doing for years on Twitch and similar sites. So in a strange turn of event, we will first have to explain the term and then attach a name to it, okay? Okay. The cloud gaming and or game streaming that we want to talk to you about in this video is a technology that carries with it the promise of letting you use any machine to play the most demanding games at the highest settings. To give you a concrete example, in case this sounded too nebulous, this type of cloud gaming would let you play AAA PC or console titles, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey for example, on your phone or tablet. Sounds much more exciting than sharing save files across multiple devices, doesn't it? Not everyone has the hardware to run the latest and most demanding video games out there. And even those who do can find keeping up with the new games tiresome, but we all have our trusty smartphones. So if you're interested in knowing more about this technology, how it works, where it's going, and even how you can use it today, then stick around because we'll be covering all of this and more in today's video. So let's start with the basics. How does it work? How could it possibly work? Well, down to its core, game streaming is supposed to work like any other streaming service. Think Netflix, Amazon, or Crunchyroll. Only instead of shows, movies, and anime, you get video games. You pay the monthly subscription, which grants you access to a virtual machine running somewhere on a server. And you then use that virtual machine to play games. Some services opt for a by-the-hour approach instead of a monthly subscription, and they can differ in terms of game selection, but you get the gist of it. And the best thing about this is that the server does all of the heavy lifting, so all you basically need is a device that's compatible with this technology. Other than that, it just needs to have a display. Now, the problem with using smartphones and tablets for some serious gaming, in addition to not even supporting most of the hottest PC and console releases, is that they generally start running really hot and start using too much power. But cloud gaming circumvents both of these issues since, once again, all the hardware demanding stuff is handled by the server. Your device just runs the streaming software and displays the video. We use phones and tablets as an example, but you could just as well use cloud gaming to game on a five-year-old laptop. It doesn't have to be an unconventional device, you can just fire it up and run the latest AAA title. No muss, no fuss, just pure state-of-the-art gameplay. Now, while game streaming services differ in terms of game selection and monetization, they all follow the same rudimentary technical procedures. Your device registers your input and sends it to the server. The server then does its thing and flings the process data back to you. In theory, this means that you could run games in 4K at 60fps, no problem, so long as the server you're using is capable of rendering that many frames in that resolution, which doesn't seem like it should be a problem for a server, of all things. But unfortunately, theory doesn't always translate into practice. All in all, there are four main problems with cloud gaming that you should be aware of. Input lag, video compression, hardware selection, and system requirements. As we've just mentioned, the data has to go all the way to the server and then back before it can produce any visible results on your monitor. And no matter how fast and efficient your internet connection is, this process will result in a healthy dose of input lag. The closer to the data center you are, the less noticeable the lag will be, but it will never beat out a native gaming experience. Now this isn't as horrible as it might sound at first. The companies that offer these streaming services are constantly developing new ways to mitigate input lag and as things stand, the technology is good enough to offer an enjoyable single player experience. But as far as competitive or even casual multiplayer is concerned, it's hard to imagine that cloud gaming will ever be a viable replacement for good old desktop PC gaming. The problem with video compression comes pretty much from the same place as the input lag. You send your input to the server, the server renders the frames and then sends them back to you. And the only way this can be accomplished in a relatively quick manner is by resorting to video compression. 
It should be noted that most of the current game streaming companies use only the best video compression available. This allows them to retain the highest quality image possible while sacrificing very little in terms of speed. But unfortunately, even the best video encoding at the moment pales in comparison to uncompressed video. The end result is such that playing a game through one of these streaming services can feel more like you're watching a let's play video on YouTube than experiencing the game for yourself on your own device. All in all, you can expect a decent dose of compression artifacts and color bending. And worst of all, nausea-inducing motion blur is all but guaranteed in fast-paced games with lots of camera movement. A good monitor can mitigate these effects to a certain extent, but seeing as how the whole appeal of cloud gaming is to avoid spending large amounts of cash on gaming equipment, this doesn't really seem like a relevant solution. Another problem with cloud gaming at the moment is that the servers all use server-grade hardware. And if this doesn't sound like a problem, just give us one minute and we'll convince you otherwise. The problem with server-grade hardware is that it's optimized for the needs of a server. And the needs of a server are very different from the needs of a gaming PC. For example, a virtual machine running on Shadow Server will be allotted 8 threads on an Intel Xeon 2620 CPU. Shadow, by the way, is one of the best cloud gaming services currently operating. This sounds like a bargain at first, especially if you know how expensive Xeon CPUs are. But since these are server cores designed for server loads, they all have relatively low clock speeds. This is perfect for servers where multitasking is key, but it's rather suboptimal for gaming where single core performance is paramount. And the CPUs that other game streaming services offer generally pale in comparison to Shadow Xeon 2620, clocking it at well below 3 GHz. So with all of this in mind, how could we not list the hardware selection as a problem? And the GPU side of things is no different. Shadow advertises their GPUs as GTX 1080 equivalents. Now in all fairness, this isn't untrue on a technical level. The Nvidia Quadro P5000 is more or less on par with the GTX 1080 as far as the specs are concerned, but it just doesn't perform as well when it comes to gaming because it wasn't designed to excel at gaming. We've made a whole video about why Nvidia Quadro GPUs aren't as good for gaming as the GeForce GPUs, so definitely check that out if you want to know more about this. The link is in the description. But for now, we feel we've said enough to illustrate our point. So let's move on to the final problem with cloud gaming, which is the system requirements. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Hold on a minute, isn't the whole idea of cloud gaming to avoid the need for system requirements altogether? How can we even talk about system requirements if this technology is supposed to make it so you can play the latest AAA titles on your smartphone, of all things? And you would be right. It's definitely true that cloud gaming lets you game on some pretty ancient hardware and software, but you still have to meet a couple of requirements before the magic can happen. The most important requirement is having a fast internet connection. And we aren't kidding when we say fast. We're talking ludicrously fast for some parts of the world. And stable too, preferably wired, although 5 GHz Wi-Fi can do the job if you're close to the router. But even then, it's not ideal. To give you a concrete example, Shadow requires a stable internet connection of 50 megabits per second. So if you want to stream games and still leave a bit of bandwidth for the rest of the household to enjoy, you'll either need to have a good cable internet or a fiber optic connection. ADSL and satellite will rarely be fast or responsive enough to get the job done. Now before we pass our final verdict on whether cloud gaming is worth it or not, we'd like to take a moment to talk about the roots and development of this technology throughout the years. The whole idea of cloud gaming has only started gaining serious traction recently when big names like Microsoft and Google decided to get involved with it. But the concept of game streaming has been discussed even way back in the last millennium. Sure, we're referring to the year 2000, but it still technically counts. OnLive was one of the first streaming services to greet the world and it was heralded by headlines foretelling the doom of console gaming. This was back in 2010. OnLive ceased to function in 2012. Still, cloud gaming continued to live on and develop. Some of the most popular services available right now are Parsec, Vortex, Shadow, GeForce Now, and PlayStation Now. 
At the moment, Shadow seems to be the best game streaming service as it offers the lowest input lag and the best image quality, but it also requires the fastest internet connection. It's also fairly expensive, but if you want to give cloud gaming a real shot, then this is the company to turn to. Just a fair warning, don't expect to game at 144 FPS in Full HD or 60 FPS in 4K, which the company advertises, since they fall rather short of this promise. As for the other cloud gaming services operating at the moment, there's not really much to tell. Parsec and Vortex aren't as impressive as Shadow on a technical level, but at least they don't require as fast an internet connection. We can certainly see Nvidia's GeForce Now toppling Shadow for the top spot, but since it's still in beta, we can't do more than just speculate. And as for PlayStation Now, it's easily one of the most affordable streaming services. But the performance is not all that grand. Which shouldn't really be all too surprising seeing as the virtual machines running the games are all PlayStations. Still, it's one of the best ways to get some console gaming done on a PC. So to return to the titular question, is cloud gaming worth it? Eh, not really. At least not yet. With all the input lag, cloud gaming is only really tolerable for single player games at the moment. As things stand, it simply doesn't offer enough to be a viable substitute for PC or console gaming. But as for whether cloud gaming is the future of gaming, here we can't really answer with a resounding no. As hard as it is to imagine that game streaming will ever overcome the hurdles we've highlighted in this video, it has also never had the benefit of companies with infinite money like Microsoft and Google investing in it. With their involvement, it's hard to dismiss cloud gaming without any real consideration. And we can definitely see how it has the potential to become a viable alternative for mainstream gaming. But even if this does happen, it's not going to happen overnight. So once again, as things stand, we still prefer to stick to good old desktop hardware. And that about does it for this video. We hope you found it helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. And in case you have friends who could benefit from watching this video, help them out by sharing it. Also, make sure to click on the bell icon if you want to see more videos like this one. This way, YouTube shouldn't be able to accidentally sneak new uploads past you. And as for the new uploads, we try to make one video every week, so keep your eyes peeled because the next one is already on its way. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.